I've had some serious computer meltdown problems. <laughs> to the point where I'm tearing out components and 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 pulling out hard drives and God knows what. Um, yeah, it's it's been great fun. Thanks to Tim, you turn Tim for helping me out. I've found out that Tim knows more about Windows 98 than I do. Um, <laughs> any road, I've got a. Uh, we're gonna go out soon, ish. I'm I'm so behind. Not only that is, I did record one of these. Um, well, I actually recorded this one and this one, and I had a quick peek at that one. But um, that hard drive died, and the the data has gone. So I'm just have to. We're going to quickly skim through. I'm absolutely starving, and I grabbed. We've got a lonely pot noodle, a super noodle that was sat in the cupboard. And I don't usually eat these. I have the posh ones, actually, the the Japanese ones. If I, you know, if you want something quick and all the rest of it. So let me just scoff through this real quickly, and then we'll get back onto it. Oh god, that tastes like shit. Right then, I'm back, and um, I didn't eat it all. It tastes like rubbish. <laughs> Let's get on with it. Oh, we're not doing this again. Oh, God, right. We're going to skim through this like crazy. All oh, right, so your value doesn't decrease based on someone else's inability to see your worth, right? So your worth is what other people... Uh, so my worth doing these videos, if no one found this funny, interesting, they didn't learn anything, whatever, then these would be worthless, right? It, 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 unless, unless just by passive views, I earned 1p a day from the adverts, then it'd be worth 1p a day, right? But we're talking about people's worth. So your value doesn't, dis, doesn't decrease based on someone else's inability to see your worth. Yes, it does. It does. For instance... We can all agree that a, a brain surgeon or a heart surgeon is worth quite a lot to either us or other people. Even if this brain surgeon never operates on you, you can understand their worth. If someone is a dolly junky, smackhead, murdering rapist, they have little worth. <laughs> right? It's big. <laughs> Fucking hell. What a little tripe. Oh, Jesus Christ. I'm going to eat the rest of this. Right, good morning, welcome back. Now, just recently, Shit, I fitted this headlight guard to my Triumph, and a couple of you asked the question, how well, do you I clean behind it now it's permanently you mounted? You pressure wash or whatever, you spray it, it's fine. It's not going to end the world. Or, now and then, every six months, take it off. What was that weird little smug face for? You can't. You have to... <laughs> he's, he's so pantomime, isn't he? You can't. You have to literally remove the bolts oh. that it's secured with, which is the headlight mounting bolts, and then the headlight itself will drop out. So then, yeah, you can take the guard off, clean the headlight, put it back in. But then you've got to refit your headlight, reset For a the chip headlight guard aim, that protects my light every from time you want to wash your headlight. Oxygen. <laughs> yeah, the, the the whole thing is ridiculous. That's just ridiculous. Now, far be it. From <laughs> For far, me to criticise Triumph's design that. house, but seriously... I don't want to say this. Far be it me, a wanker, to say that these other people are absolute twats. I'm not, I'm not going to do that, but here I go, I'm going to do it. It's like, fuck off. <laughs> but here I go. Now, far be it from me to criticise Triumph's design house, but seriously, they got this one wrong. They really needed to make this easily detachable, and it's not, not in any way. And it's stainless steel, it's good quality manufacture, but it's poor design. It's got a screw underneath, that comes out, that's easy. But what we need is a couple of screws on the side here. So I can just unscrew it, lift it off, clean the headlight, put it back on without disturbing the set of the headlight, because that's just daft. Remember, so let's do that. that is daft. A little modification now, what he's going to a factory do accessory. Is daft. Uh, yeah, that's a word. <laughs> I'm taking the piss. <laughs> Okay, now. 
Right, so it's made out of good quality stainless steel construction, good manufacture, but the design is shit. And the design is shit, ladies and gentlemen, because they didn't make it out of mild steel. Are you for fuck's sake? That's how we measure. And you know, he's always tiptoeing, reaching, stretching. Dude, it's on a ramp. Lower it, you fucking knob. Don't know what the two's for. Don't know what the two's for. It's actually 2.5 mil, but I don't know what the two's for. Oh, here we go. Right. What's the two lines for? I'm going to cut this, and it's going to be a bit wibbly wobbly wibbly wobbly, right? So you're just going to do it again? <laughs> Why is the two lines? Why are the two lines? Nobody knows. Why? This edge is as shit as the edge you're going to cut. Why is the two? I don't get it. Why isn't that two lines? Because he wants an exact fitness in the fuck on it. Measure the disc, you dickhead. So that. So what that is, is that's, that's me about to scream. Dude, you want it on a bigger piece as you can get so you can drill through it, right? And he's like, oh, he's coming across and going, oh, shit, yeah. And then he's going around it. He's fucking such a mong. <laughs> Right, you see how you've got them little kiddy fiddler gloves on? Right, like, they're not protecting you from like heat. The the they're like Johnny's, right? <laughs> you you might burn them to your fucking skin. He's like, ah ah ah, said, dude, wear proper gloves, you idiot. If you're going to do this, oh. <sighs> precision tape. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Oh, this is just genius. Right, I, I give you stupid, ladies and gentlemen. Stupid with a capital stupid. What are you doing? So he's using the edge of the tape and where it crosses these lines as his first reference point. Then he's written the drawn these lines just by measuring, by guesstimation, right? Because you know what it's like. But they don't cross. So for those... Because like I say, there might be young lads watching this and... I, you know, if you don't know, or there might be people, I do know there are people who watch this channel who, and they, they, they say in the comments, right, they say, I don't even, I'm into computers or I'm into something else. This interests me, but I don't know why these things are done. So what you're meant to do is you're meant to draw a square. Now, if I hold uh, shift, right, if I hold shift, it goes vertical, 45, 90, like that, right? So if you hold shift when you make a square, you make a perfect square. It might not look it on the screen, that's all aspect ratios. But just to show you, there's a rectangle, right? So with a perfect square, if you go from edge to edge at 45 degrees, and that's the important thing. So what you do is you just draw edge to edge, and you go edge to edge like this, right? And that is 45 degrees because this has done it perfectly. That's locking it. But, you know, you do it edge to edge like that, right? And you're going to be bang on, right? And you say, right, what that is in the middle is where I want to put my hole you don't need this line this line is redundant you don't need that line right this is what you need now let's just say if i say this is kind of what he's done right what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna guess where the middle it actually instead let's get rid of that let's actually do another square so if we get a square about the same size right so it's like that it's about the same size if i just do a let's do a red line. If I do a line and say, "Oh, I'm kind of I'm kind of cheating because I can see where the middle of that is." So if it, if I do this and I guess pretty much where the middle is, there, right? So I'll do a straight line. That's where I, I that's just quick. I'm not really fucking sit there giving it the eyeball. Now if I go corner to corner, holding shift, right, like this, I'm not far off. <laughs> that's a shame. <laughs> 
<laughs> I did want to be a bit more far off. Uh, but yeah, you know, just if you do a line there, right, I know that's off. But you can't tell because it's whatever, because you're retarded for whatever reasons. Right, when you do this corner to corner thing like this, you will see that where these cross don't intersect. So, if you've done this correctly, you put your hole there where the cross is. You don't put it where the line is. You don't put it where any of these intersect the line. You don't put it in between the two. You put it there. Now, this has to work. This this works if you know where these edges are. And you know this is 45 degrees. Now, if you're doing a square, you know where 45 degrees is. If you're doing a rectangle like this, well, then, where do you want it? You know what I mean? Just say if you do it between here and here. Here's a good one. Let's try this one because this is this is really guesstimating there. Right. And I've made sure my document... Oh, good deal. I'm making sure my document is bigger because there's these little tabs at the bottom that tell you where the middle is. Um, so I'm not cheating in that respect. Oh, do it green again. Right. Deselect that. Oh, it doesn't like deselect, does it? Just select something else. Right then. So if I go corner to corner, right, because I know this is square, as in these sides are perpendicular and parallel to each other. So these two ed edges are parallel, these two edges are parallel, and they're all perpendicular. Not to each other, just the, the verticals and the horizontals. When I do that, you see there, you can see that I am not going to follow that green line. This is the corner. This is it. But to do that, you need, right, you need a square edge. If I have an edge that looks like looks like this, and it looks like this, I don't know where these edges are. Where do I do my corner to corner? Now I know where it is, but I'd be like this and go. Well, I don't know where the radius ends, and then I'd go like this and go. Uh, and you guess over here somewhere, you know, you do that. And then you can see your lines drift, so you need it to be a square, right? <laughs> I present to you, what the fuck? You don't know where anything is. If this line is parallel and straight with these ones, which these two lines look like they're probably parallel, this is off, because where it, where's your ends? Stupid bullshit. You see, look, he ignored it and put the hole on the bloody line anyway. So what was the fucking point? <laughs> and then he's, don't need that anymore. Screw it, that shit off. Cause it, it, make, it points out how stupid I am. Fucking hell. Pilot bottles. Well, this is not putting in the drill anymore. And one speed of drill is fine for every single drill bit. Oh, God. What? You didn't... Right. Let's just go back. Right. Look what it says. Cut plus... plus cut plus cool cutting and drilling oil. Well, it, I say it, it's a coolant. That's doing fuck all for that tap. It's not fast enough. Oh well, whatever. Let's soup this shit. You have to take the scale off. Which, weirdly enough, you'd want the whole thing completely covered in scale because it does act as a really good... Uh, it's already oxidised, it, so the scale is like absolutely... It's like, it's like a pacifier. It's, pass, uh, it's, it's like parkerization. That's the word I was looking for. Now, look how lovely this that is. It looks like shit, doesn't it? Fuck me. I don't fit. I've never ever seen anyone 
get 2.5 mil thick steel and try and shave it down to two with a linisher. <laughs> That's just stupid. <laughs> You can see the one the one this is not The thing is, this is the funny thing. It, I, and everyone says his video is great, his focus is terrible. Now I'm shit as well, but everyone goes on about how great he is. It's like, what the fuck are you talking about? It's focusing. Fucking focus, you fuck. What I was going to say is that all these things that I comment on, he won't do out of sheer... Fuck you, I'm not doing that because everyone will know that you said it and now I'm doing it. But it's to help yourself, you div. You would much rather be stubborn in front of your little gay boy audience who don't watch my videos half the time anyway. Sort it out. It's not even flat anymore. It's like a bloody wedge. Right, I've been through this before in the, the the version that died, but this is what I would have done. Let's very, very quickly go through what I would have done. So, you've got the chip guard, right? Uh, the chip pan, basket. The basket, that's what it is. Oh, I didn't even need to do that. So, it's like this. Oh, is it like that? No, it's not like that, is it? It's a bloody... It's. I always get this wrong. I say I always get this wrong. It's not like that. It is... A guard, right, like this. And I'll only do one half. And then what it's got is it's got a welded on bit with a radius on it. So let's just chop that off. Chop that off. And we'll paint this bit red because this is um, the bit that I want to focus on. Make that transparent. Right, so it's basically got a bit welded on like this. This is curved, but I can't be bothered, right? It's got that welded on like that, and then it has a bit that's, you know, like this. And then it kicks in like this, and then it's got the rest of the lug, right? Great. This is, uh, I don't like that. Do you know what? I, don't, I actually don't like it. Let's make it look like it should look like. So it's a chip guard, a chip basket, like this, like that, All right? Well, is it? It's more like that. Well, whatever. Fuck, who cares? Jesus Christ. So we copy that and we flip that vertically, like so, and then we put it back where it belongs, like so. There, that'll do. So what I'll do is I'll also do a side profile, right? So the side profile is kind of like that. Although that's chopped off. Like so. And then I'm going to do it red in a minute. So basically what I'm showing you here is um, that bit in red is this bit. It's just This is from above and then this bit in the middle is looking down. And it's only because I'm just doing it like this for room. So we can just imagine that that you know, these bits are in line. So the, there's them bits there like that. So you'd have a fold where them lines are. Yeah? And then we have a hole there. That's the it, it, It's rounded. It follows the profile, but we don't care. So this is what you've got. You've got these folds here in grey where it kinks out. So what I would do to do this is, and I'll do it in green so we can easily see it, what I would do to rectify this is go and buy, oh, you know, a, a cheap stainless steel ruler. That's about the right thickness. How thick is that? Where's that bloody... Oh, fucking God knows where it's gone. Oh, there. So this ruler is a millimetre thick, right? You go and get a stainless steel ruler or a strip of stainless steel. It'll cost nothing. You, you don't have to go and get a sheet of it. Right, what do you say? It was 15 by 22, that little bit. So it's 15 wide, right? 15 millimetres wide, so top to bottom is 15. How big is that? This is what, an inch? Something like that? This is 24.8, so almost an inch. 
right? Okay, so you go a ruler, right? Easy to bend. This stuff's piss easy to bend. Get a stainless steel one, right? From bloody wherever. How much is a stainless steel ruler? Let's go and find out. I'm, I'm not, uh, <coughs> the reason why I say ruler is because it was in front of me. But number two is it's got graduations on it. <laughs> so you just, I'll bend it where it says 18 <laughs> kind of thing, right? Um, stainless. And you can pick these up anywhere. Steel. Uh, steel. Ruler. Ruler. And you could do the whole thing because it's 300 mil long. I bet they cost nothing. Uh, look, you see, look. Stainless steel. Shatterproof, I hope so. £3, and that's from Amazon. I can get it free delivery tomorrow. And that, that's both sides. Obviously, it's got all the graduations in it and all that shite. But it wouldn't even matter. This one's even got a pre-drilled hole for him. <laughs> it's a bloody fucking steel ruler. You know what I mean? It's just like, why? I thought that's not the problem. Any road, you go and get one of them. Or anything, anything, anything. You go into Parlander, or anywhere shit like that. Anywhere cheap. You go to Tesco's. Anywhere. You could use a knife. You could literally use the blade of a knife. A really cheap stainless steel knife blade. Right? Just chop the bits off, chop the blade, you know, like a bread knife. Anything would do, right? Cheap as anything. Look at the size of it, it's tiny, right? Stainless steel. And then what you do is you weld it to say there, right? Onto his chip pan, right? Onto the basket. And then what you do is you cut that bit off, right? So this red bit, you can see where it was welded, you cut that off. So you just chop the end. So in his case, you just cut this... You see the radius there? You just cut that off. Cut that off. Or keep most of it. Just detach it. Right? And then what you do is... Is you weld this bit underneath to your chip basket. And then what you do is... You weld a stud on. You weld a stud on there. Like you can even put washers in there if you want. If this gap... Because this, this kicks out quite a bit. Right? You just you work it out. You put a stud in there, and what you do to your, your red bit, right, is you drill a hole where that stud's going to go. Oh, I can't actually move that because it's in line. You you move it over here, so there's your stud there, right? And then what you do is you, you, you cut out that bit, and you cut out that bit. And then you get your rubber, because that's what you do with steel. You rub stuff out, right? You rub one out. There we go, right? So you make a little slot like this. So this is into the original bracket that's, you know, that's, it's into this bit that's here, the original bracket. And then your headlight, where you stood on, you can just hang it in. You get some um, flared nuts, some flange nuts, and on. The way you do a stud, if you don't have like a stud gun or whatever, is drill a hole, put your fastener through it, your button fastener, weld it on, and then you bloody rub it down. You you grind it back to flat. Then you've got a stud. You, know, oh, you don't even have to do that. You can just grind the head down and just weld it. You tack well, tiny tap, tack, 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 three tack welds, and then grind that dome down so it never comes out. Stainless steel thread, stainless steel bit. It all lines up, right? You're laughing. That's it. And then what you do is you can just get your chip pan basket, put it in because it, it hangs in these little hooks, and then you just wind the two nuts on. So you will have the basket, the, the the frames that are in the bike. You never have to take them out. You've got your basket and just two nuts. That's it. That's parts count. Done. Job done. Sorted. What he's about to do is fucking stupid. Right, so the whole point of this is he's using that line on the tape, by eye, to line up with this bracket. What he doesn't realise is as soon as he chops this, well, that, yeah, as soon as he chops it, in any kind of way, the basket and the headlight are all independent of each other. The other thing is, is so well, as soon as he cuts them, they're completely independent of each other. So you could have this go sky high, and it wouldn't really matter because you're just winging it together with nuts. Two degrees in this system is going to mean quite a lot to your headlight alignment.
No, what, what? That's how you find centers of holes. No transfer punches, you just hold it and wing it around. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> you can literally see from his own video why that's wrong, watch. They are... <laughs> All right, if you want it there, if you want it moved, what well, happens if everything's precise? Nothing's precise. It's just fucking Jimmy guesswork. Jesus Christ! So you can see what I mean by the curve there. How it, how it basically it juts out to get around the thing, then juts back in again. You just have a plate underneath. Stay in the steel. Bob's your uncle sorted. And it, the thing is, it'd save him so much. It'd look tidier. Save him so much time, and. This this green plate here, you just you just put a radius on it round the back, right? You just put a radius here where this. It's just no, 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 no. Precision. <laughs> I love it. They're not even in the middle. They're not even in the middle of the black marks, but they're not in the middle. I can tell from here. Fuck me. Ooh, a block of alley. Bloody hell. Fire Dell. Steady Eddie. Steady Eddie. Pilot boat drill. Straight in there. We know he's got stainless steel wire in his MIG. We know he has. I've got one of these, this is a wear uh, screwdriver. I've got a little yellow, little stubby handle, and that's great, because you can just put, it, it, it takes the bits. Instead of doing that like a retard. Actually, you know what? You don't see stubby, look at the size of them holes. Look at how they're clear holes. Um, and they're not straight, and they're not, fucking Jesus Christ. So yeah, you can see here, all right? You just cut this, grind this flat, get rid of it. You just cut this off, grind this flat, you weld in your bit. You could even, if you wanted to, weld in the bit temporarily, just tack and tack it in, and then drill them to get... That's actually not a bad idea. Um, pack out the hook. Cause you, uh, the, the, this here. Just say you could pack out that hole, a bit of bloody wood or something, chocolate biscuit, anything. <laughs> pack out that hole a bit. Well, before you cut this, weld this bit on, just tack it in. It doesn't really matter, but if you want to be really, what is it? And you could drill this hole through both. Oh, I don't know what that was. That's bollocks. Sorry, but that is bollocks. There we go. Nothing important, it's just a bloody box, a toolbox fell over, like the little carry case job is. It was obviously on its last legs. <laughs> Not last legs, it was just holding on and slid off. Um... Yeah, so you, and you can drill them so they're perfectly aligned, so you know exactly how they're perfectly aligned. And then when you cut it, you know everything's straight and everything's where it should be in relation to each other. But no, he's doing this instead because this is smart. How bad that hole is! You see how bad that hole was. But they are not. They're not aligned. And that's how you use a file. He's panicking, isn't he? <laughs> Tell you what. Don't get fasteners that fit, will you? Whatever you do, look at that piece of shit. Wow. So, four tapped holes, four washers, four bolts that all have to be modified. All the, the fasteners have to be modified. Why? Like I said, drill a hole. Right, a, a, a clearance hole, but only just. Put your button heads through it. Tack them on, grind them back, jobs are good and right? Or if you've got a stud gun, <laughs> stud. Um, and then nuts. Flange nuts. No need for fucking washers. 
No need for bullshit. Just sorted. It would look better. It wouldn't rust. It would be cheaper. It would be everything. And people might say, yeah, but he's got that steel. Yeah, but he's using all his fasteners. And the thing is, and I know people don't seem to think that things that you have cost you money, but you had to pay for them at one point. In soft jaws all the time. What's with the soft jaws? So what are you doing? With the, with the scale half on. <laughs> you got to remember, this is for a brand new bike, right? This isn't for the barbecue booster or something else that people obviously go, that's shite. This is for a brand new bike. I wonder why Triumph made that chip pan guard. Well, I know how they made the chip pan guard. They made it to fucking make more money. Uh, that's the only reason, because they didn't do anything else. Um, but I wonder why they um, made it out of stainless. Right. I'll have to knock that on there for a minute. Right, there we go. Bloody disturbances. Right, let's get on with this rubbish. Oh, God, do you know what? That done half smoke, that shit. <laughs> it doesn't show you that bit. It done half smoke. What are you doing? So you're telling me you're going to put... That's the wrong bloody button. <laughs> Excuse me. You're telling me you're going to put Loctite on every time you take it apart to wash it? <sighs> you see, this is what I mean, you see. That's, that's now free. That's now free to wave around. That's not in relation. You could have this stick up vertically, have the headlight facing the right way. Because it all piv you've now put a double pivot in it, so you align this to the just imagine you've got a liner, you align this to the tape. That doesn't mean that this is in alignment to the chip pan, the chip pan can be still tilted. And the so you've got the 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 light, which is your defining thing, that's exactly what it should point. But your chip pan can pivot, and then your pivot, so your pivots can pivot around your pivot of your pivot, and it can all pivot and all be wrong. <laughs> That's gorgeous. That's all I can say. That is gorgeous. Don't clean it up. Don't, don't, just don't. Just look at it. It's gorgeous. Wow. <laughs> what is he doing? Oh, you're just gluing the washers to the bloody the the button head. What are you doing? Backwards and forwards. Oh, what are you doing? You're just a mong, aren't you? I told you, he keeps on giving. You think you've seen it all. You think you've seen everything stupid. Nope. Nope. Nope, there's a lot more to come. You see, I'll tell you something. I'll show you something interesting. To make sure these wires match up, if you look at that wire, that's perfect. It matches up perfect. And if you watch that wire, that wire matches up perfect. And if you watch that wire, it matches up perfect. Even though it's a little tiny little slither. And you can see these are the same thing. These spars that come down here, they're all perfect. And it's because what they'll do is they'll weld the cage together and then they'll put these over the top and then they'll cut them. Once they put these two spurs in there, they'll cut them so they're all in line still. It's like someone was thinking about it. I've never seen something more stupid in my entire life. It's 
never seen something more stupid in my entire life. Precision. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? All that blue shit dribbling out. Look at that gap. Look at that. It's not even in line. Right, there we are. A very simple fix. Now I can remove my headlight cover to clean my headlight by simply removing three screws. Well, by simply removing these six bolts, I can remove my engine. <laughs> so fucking what? Well, I didn't try and think of that. Because it's... Look at it. Fucking dickhead. Because it doesn't matter. It just... Oh, fuck's sake. I'll see you next time. What a load of busy... But look at the gap. Look at that fucking gap compared to the other one. It doesn't show you the other one. Oh, there it does. Look at that little sneaky. Have a look round. Look at the fucking... Oh, Jesus. What a load of fucking triumph. My God. That is just brilliant. Right, yeah. We'll watch that one. We'll watch this one and then we'll knock it on the head and I'll do these other two because I haven't even watched that one yet. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. This is just complete fucking nonsense. That's what this is. Right, good morning. Welcome back. Now today, damaged bolt rescue, like the title says, and who's ever heard the phrase, you are one sheared off bolt away from a three-day ordeal. Nobody. You've just met it up. I think we've all been there at some point or another. You work on old vehicles, you're going to get grief at some point. So what I'd like to do today is share a few things that I do to get me out of a situation when I get a bolt that's either seized, rounded off, or sheared off. Right, first, a seized bolt. This, we is, all just, get... this is just either please sponsor me or these are my sponsors. It says with his spanner monkey cap on, spanner monkey cap on his ams oil in the background, his sealy stuff plastered everywhere, and his wee ha. <sighs> them don't we the seized bolt it won't move it's absolutely stuck solid you can swing on it all you like it's just not moving it's getting a bit scary it might snap off so the first thing we reach for is the penetrating oil there's a couple of routes you can go on that you can use the slow stuff something like an aero coil you spray a little bit on every day give it a week a week dude i've got places to be come back at the weekend have another go at it and you will get it to move Prove this it. Dude, you've got all the time in the world prove it Stuff creeps in under the seized thread and it will eventually release it. That's probably about as good as it gets, the error coil. It's a lot of money, but it's worth it because it will save you a lot of money. It's 25 quid a can. The other side of it, if you haven't got the time to a few days keep tapping a bit on there, you need it done right now, then you can use something like that, that Rostov Blue Ice. That works really well. It's a freezing cold spray. You no, spray. you do it. You got this. Spray a coil on. Spray that shit on. Give it some heat. I know. Spray on the coal. Give it some heat. Straight away. Eh, fucking around. Spray it for a good 10 seconds on the bolt, and it will turn it blue, and it will freeze it. And it says on the tin, minus 45 centigrade. It fractures the rust. No, it doesn't. You're talking shite. And it will eventually allow it to crack free. So once you've got it moving, it. there's the next challenge. You've got the thing moving, but it's stiff. And the stiffer it is, the more dangerous it is that can still shear off because obviously there's a lot of debris in that thread. And as you're turning it, even though it's moving, that grinding motion from metal grinding to- Grinding motion. Metal is gonna get it hot. And as it gets hot, it's gonna expand and well, you know the rest. So- Ah, oh, do we? <laughs> keep it cool. Use the Rostov ice, keep spraying on it. Keep that thread cool if you just feel it. If it gets hot, that's a problem. Or even just an airline. Let it cool down. Walk away for so a minute. You don't need that shit in a can. You need an airline. <laughs> Del, I don't think your advertisers are going to be too pleased. <laughs> Make sure it's not got too hot. And then it He's will eventually... This is spacking out as well. Says the master of uh, Zoom. With a little bit of in and out and in and out. You make a baby. You will eventually unscrew it. So that's the normal way that I deal with threads that are stuck. So Just annoying. Dude, if you're going to stand there like this and do a presentation on what shit you can get from Seedly, manual focus it. Fuck's sake. Patience. Anyway, the next thing... Get yourself a dildo and put it on a stick and then make a little stand. Put the dildo where you would stand. Do the manual focus. Because I don't know what camera you got. Do the manual focus. And it zooms in. It like, gives you a little window zoomed in so you can see... And as soon as you can see how crisp the detail, all the veins and stuff are on that dildo, then you bingo. And you leave it like that, move the dildo, well actually no, leave the dildo on the stick there and just do a voiceover. 
Just get, just get a wobble now and then. <laughs> that if you have a rounded off head on the bolt or a nut, that you just can't get a socket or anything on to get a grip of it and you start reaching for the mole grips, God forbid. Right, we'll, we'll see this. This is great. Let's show you a few proper methods of doing a, that. A few proper methods. He shows us one and he's done this before. So he's just recycling the same horse. This re You really know when he's running out of shit to do because he is recycling the same videos, right? So if we go to... Oh, we'll, we'll do that some other day. Uh, if we go back to the old Del Boy, right? Del Boy's garage, rusty, oh, rusty belt. I don't know, I've got cat locks on. Forget that. So rust proofing bolts, simple skills healer coils, chewy heads, easy rescue, time certs, rust removal. Jurassic exhaust studs. Ah, so. Let's see what he does on his Jurassic exhaust studs. Very quickly, we'll just skim through the shit. Let me rephrase that. Only Let's refer rephrase everything. So, what's he say? Let's see what he says. Because he's got all, this, he's Time got all tell the same stuff. How many of them snap off. So, let's take all the furniture out of the way. Drain everything we need to drain. Everything that isn't a piston is furniture. And pray. The sell it being Q. What heat for? Gonna need that. Right, this is gonna be a team effort to introduce the rest of the section. Hey. We've got Cano Aero Croil. I've been soaking it in that for ages. That stuff creeps in between joints that are frozen. So it drops on then. He's been doing it for ages, like he's been putting it on for like the last week. Job done, let's just see that crack. And it's proved itself many times to be many good. Rostov Blue Ice from Worth. This is a different kind of freeing agent. It's freezing cold, it goes onto the rust and it freezes it and fractures it away from whatever it's connected to. So that's gonna help me oh. remove the rust that's on the exposed bits of the thread. I've also got some WD-40 Specialist Fast Release Penetrant. Don't know if it's any better than Croil and Ice. I don't know, but I've got some and every little helps. So he's joining the team for the day. And of course, some map gas. I'd run out of map gas. The weirdest got... thing is, is that Dell, I've got that handle. I've also got that bottle. And I did a video about releasing it with heat. And then lo and behold, it, it turns up. This does. Some, and as you all know, a little bit of heat does wonders. So that's going to help too. So my little four-man attack squad there is going to help me out. But like I said, the first thing is to get all the furniture and garbage. One of them's a bottle of gas on a blowtorch. The other three are flammable. <laughs> out of the way so I can get a clean line of sight at each of those bolts. Let's get the furniture out of the way. Let's get him... Right, so you got the furniture out of the way. Oh, he's... that's the funniest thing is he snaps drilling. What's he drilling? Removal. Let me snap one. Yeah, yeah, he does one already, look. You see it all fucking smoking off. That's, that's WD-40 and Croil. Now we're getting the heat involved. Some more fluids. We've also gone to the second one now. Top one again. <laughs> it penetrates. It penetrates. Now, they're going to be positively hysterical to drill out because they tap straight into the radiator itself. 
So drilling in just a bit too far, you'll be putting a drill bit straight into your radiator. So when the time comes to do them, I'm going to have loads of fun. I don't think he did. I think he would exchange the radiator for a new one. <laughs> and then didn't do a video about actually trying to get them out regardless. So, fail. Like you used absolutely everything then. Failed. We haven't, got to, we, haven't, we haven't even got to the show. Right, so here we go. Right, so that's the croil, and he's spraying it on the nuts for some reason. Now the eyes. Right, don't buy that shit. How much is that rost off? I bet it's a fucking fortune, isn't it? Let's just go and check. Rost off. <sighs> Versed. Tech nine quid a cat. Oh, fucking hell. 17 quid. Shut the fuck up. So, what you do is, instead of buying this shite, right? I only use Amazon because it's just a, the go-to place, and it's expensive, blah, 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 but whatever. It, well, it's a good idea. If you can see how expensive Amazon is, you can probably get it a bit cheaper somewhere else, like if you go in person. So it's a can of air, which sounds like a joke, and if it was 1996, it would be a joke. Um, what's the cheapest can of air? Oh, God, really? Is that what it cost? cost? These air dusters, right? Use this shit. Get the stuff you can't use upside down. So the invertible stuff, don't get that. What you want is just the stuff you can't use upside down. It'll say, you know, it says, I can't, you can't use this upside down. Uh, you can get it from all sorts of places. Is this the five-star crap? Yeah, it's the five-star crap. Um, uh, may burst if heated. And what you do is you turn it upside down and you spray it. And then all of the shit in there, same bloody stuff basically. The sol the solvent, not the solvents, the propellants go on there. They're kept under pressure, so the liquid. When they go on there, they evaporate. When they evaporate, they suck all the energy out of things. They take all the heat out of stuff, so it cools stuff down. Just like when you know, when you spray the deodorant can for too long, the can cools down because of basically rapid expansion. Right? Awesome. <laughs> well, you never said that. Why does the rust on the nut, the exterior of the nut, really matter? Like, it really wasn't that bad. Right, so he, he, he thinks he's cleaning the... You don't, you don't clean it with a nut, you idiot. You clean it with a dye, if you can, and even then... Pff. Another little trick that might work for you if you're doing this. Obviously, I think I covered it in a recent video. When you've got a protruding piece of thread sticking out of a, a nut and you want to just remove that through, that protruding piece of thread gets all corroded and expanded. Wire brush. And it's trying to drag the nut over that is when it locks up and you're leaning on it and it snaps off. That's when it all goes south. So what about using a clean nut, a brand new stainless steel nut out of your drawer and use that as a thread cleaner. It's Pop not, it on the is it? It's just running up. It's like this, if your nut is going to run over the crud, then all that nut is doing is going to run over the crud. Fucking idiot. The end of he the says rusty... something, doesn't think it applies the other way around. Because it's stainless steel. And... Gnarly old thread. It'll only go on about that much of a turn, but get it on there first, line it up, get some of your penetrating oil or rust off ice, whatever. Whatever, Give it, a good old... it doesn't matter, even though some of them cost like fucking eight quid, some of them cost like 30 quid. Spray. And then with a socket, just work that nut on and it will cut through cut. that cruddy expanded oh. rust buildup and act like a thread cleaner, a proper thread cleaner. Okay, so no, it's not. It's not at all. Wire brush, dickhead. Wire brush. 
all the way around the thread. My little wire mop there gets no, around most brush. of it. Little toothbrush size wire one, right? Get in there, stainless steel one, get in there and just nuke it. And it clings off the nuts so the sockets fit, but there's nothing like using a nut as a thread cleaner. When you've done that, if you can spin that on and off by hand on every one, you know that once you crack the nuts on those studs, they should come straight off. Should, he said. But every little helps, eh? The, 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 the nuts aren't really bad at all. Look at them. Look at them. That, that's it's still got the flank on it. It now? Oh, so the croil and stuff has burnt off. That was useless. He has let it cool down. I can see it smoking. Looks like the studs coming out of that one. Let it cool. It's see, no, let it cool down. Idiot. What is, what is the heat magically doing if it's still hot? Just take it off. Let it go. You see what I mean? Here we go. Which one's that one? I'm just going to rust off shite. Could have been the WD-40 rubbish. Don't wind it backwards and forwards, you're trying to get it off. I've, I've had this off by now. Yeah, pulling the stud out. One success and one fail. People might not realise, but this is a fail, right? Because some studs aren't studs. Oh, no, some studs aren't studs. Some fasteners aren't studs. So if you can't get the bolt out, you, you, you're going to... Sh you know what I mean? If you can't get the bolt out, you're just fucked. Right? Some aren't like that. Some studs are actually welded in place. So if you can't, you can't draw the stud out. That's what I'm trying to get at. So you call that a fail, right? It, it, it's come off, but that's not a successful... The, the fact the nut is still seized to the stud, and that's what you're trying to get off. Are we going hot or are we going cold? Because when you spray shit on it, it's cooling it down. So what was the point in heating it up? Again, and the flames. Have you noticed that the outside ones seem to come off easier? Which is something I can vouch for. The outsider ones always seem to, it's always the ones that are nestled in all this shite. See, you keep on spraying it with that shit, but look at those threads. The threads that are in the head are, are super clean. Look, you know, you're just spraying shit on it for no reason. So which 
which one do you need? Which one worked? None of them. It's bollocks. Used heat. Uh, where are we? Here we are. Right, to demonstrate this... So now we're make doing little... it and there's no heat this time. Why? Because silly cats sell heat. Or rig. I'm going to use a couple of slip nuts to jam this bolt in... Slip nut. The vice completely, and now I'm going to get the head of this bolt on the grinder, take all the corners off it, so it represents a rounded off bolt. You want to do it properly, you want to really show off these shitty sockets you get from Sealy. You put it in a lathe, make it actually round. If it can do that, you'd be like, wow. Properly rounded well, off. Well, you just said properly rounded off. I'll, I'm, I'll raise you your rounded off and say lathe. He keeps on doing these nuts. You'd think he'd keep them, wouldn't you? Right, that's the bolt jammed in the vise and the head pretty much ground off. We took nearly all the flanks off that. This is a regular it's 12... in real life. They don't just go round off. They go round off, right? <laughs> they rot. And they don't do it symmetrically. Sided ordinary socket. 17 mil, the correct size. Just spins on it. Absolutely annihilated. So the next thing, probably the best thing that you could use is this snap-on flank drive socket. And that actually has got... A little bit of purchase. So let's see if that will get hold of it, a flank drive socket. Is that how you undo something? It's almost like he's trying to round it off, look. Like he's tipping the head. And that was a, a nice little edit there. That could be 20 minutes. Oh, what? What's with the knuckle dusters and snooker cue, you hard nut? <laughs> Best not take the piss out of Dell. He'll ring the police. I know you what, he'll come round and kneecap you. <laughs> what the fuck have you got a fucking shitty pair of knuckle dusters and a fucking snooker cue for? What a fucking puffer. Jesus Christ. Is he just... What a little... Because that's how you take sockets off. Put your finger down there. We couldn't even see if it was turning it because he hadn't put a mark on it because he's disingenuous like fuck. Well, oh, no, Mike's... Chain, look. He's, he's a part of a biker gang. Oh, Dell's Angels. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't make myself laugh. Fucking Dell's Angels. Oh, that's going to be a t-shirt. Be part of Dell's Angels. It's going to be a shitty snooker cute and a knuckle duster <laughs> and a bit of chain. Dell's Angels, I'm so funny. Experience, right since I did my training. A flat. Right now, in my experience, right since I did my training. Yeah, to what? Reverse a bus. A flank drive. Snap-on socket gets just about everything, even if they're rounded off. But this one, we've rounded it off enough that it won't. Get it's small size. See if that works. Still slipping round. So even when your best socket slips over the top, the next thing is a temptation to reach for the vice grips. What's wrong with that? The nut's fucked. Actually, no. Sorry. I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna do some advertising now. We're going to do advertising over Dell's video. Uh, what is it? It's is it fourteen ten? These things, best things on earth. Best tool I've got, these things. Right, I've said it before, these things are, are lethal, right? And I saw some other ones, these ones, look at these ones. What's that, 341. 341, I want to try some of these because these look even deadlier. Oh, there's 343s as well, they look evil. 
Look at them bad boys. Oh yeah, get me some of those. Eddie Road. Yeah, the 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 I, I know I don't know about these because I ain't got some yet. The uh, fourteen the fourteen tens. Back again, back again. There, the fourteen tens. This is what they are. Right, get them. You will never, ever, 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 ever regret it. They are amazing. They are superior tools. Yes, they're expensive. They are worth every fucking penny. They, I will take the Pepsi challenge with these over anything. Honestly, they're just fucking... <laughs> uh, the nuts will fall off in fear when they hear it coming. Honestly. And the thing is, it's small at lead. Let me go and get it. There we go. These bad boys. I say they've got the 4010. They're year big, right? And you've got a very simple tool. You've got this uh, screw here, right? A lot quicker than bloody messing around with mole grips. And then it's just this simple bar and then a nice big enough grip. And you just squeeze, right? I have got anything to squeeze with. Anything to demonstrate. But yeah, it's like a, a round bit of steel. Yeah, you, know, you can just quite easily just... And you can squeeze the living fucking shit out of them. Right? And they're just... Oh, yeah. Just absolutely wonderful. The bit into this, this is just a block of... Stainless, and they just bit into the side of it a bit. These teeth, I've had these for years. The teeth are absolutely fine. All right, they're not all chewed up and knackered. Um, as you can see, how well they grab together still. And these are my right. It's fucked. It, 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 it stop messing around when stuff is stuck, stuck, stuck. And uh, yeah, they're amazing. And you can get them little heads. What is that wide? You can even grab them on the nose, but I won't, you know. But this is this is 48 mil that way. It's hard to do this with the bloody wrong way. So 48 mil that way. They're 18 mil wide, and you've got this, you know, 30, 300 mil reach to really talk down on them. Fantastic things. You get them off, no fucking problem. Obviously, it's all chewed out, and there's nothing going to get hold of it in terms of tools. Well, the vice grips are okay if you can get them in there. If this is an exhaust stud on a car engine up underneath, you're not going to get vice grips in there. You need a socket that's going to no. grip it. And if the best socket known to man isn't going to grip it, you need a special one. And I've got one. Well, no, this is the thing. What happens if you can't get a socket in there? Like, just so you get a socket on it, but you can't get anything in there. There's no way to move. There's no nothing. You're still fucked, are you? You know what I mean? It's like, what happens if the nut's there and then there's something here? You can't get your ratchet in there. You can't get anything in there. Get these in there, though. And these are lock-on sockets. Well, it's from Sealy. Have got a link, though? They've got a special feature inside them that helps them to grip a rounded-off bolt. We're not going through this because he did an entire video on this and it's just nonsense to rip the head off the bolt. So if you want a socket that's gonna grip a, a chewed up head, that's the one. Right, I don't think we can prove it more clearly than that. The best quality flank drive socket will normally get a fastener that's a little bit bruised and rounded, but when they're as rounded off as that, it took the lock on socket. But the thing is you don't understand, right? Not only are they rounded off, but it's all weakened because it's all, the corrosion has crept in. So what you do is, as soon as you turn it, it just collapses. That's why these are good, because what it does is it, whatever metal's left there, it squeezes the living shit out of it, right? So you can grab hold of it. And then you just twist, it just twists threads off, right? But it gets To get it hold off. of it. Now I'll leave a link to these in the description below if you want to cheat yourself. Tom, they're ordinary sockets. They're still flank drive, and they've got these little special features. So you can use them as regular ordinary sockets. They come in metric, imperial, and long sockets, as well as short. So there's a whole range of these if you want to treat yourself to some, and they will get you out of this problem. As you can see, not only buckled the bolt, torn it out of these two grip nuts, it's also ripped the head clean off. That is some grip. Anyway, imagine we're in this situation now. The penetrating oil hasn't allowed the shaft to come out of the thread. And even though we had a rounded head, even though we got hold of it with a lock on socket, we've sheared it off and we've now got a stump. 
So what do we do next? I can't wait. Let's see if we... That's too low. Too high. Too high. I can't wait. Let's see if we actually find out what we need to do. All right, now in the extremely lucky event that it shears off with a big convenient lump of stud sticking out. Which it will Which never it never do. does, then you... Wait, no, it doesn't do it because it's not convenient. It doesn't do it because that's not how fasteners work, you tit. The underside of the head is what com what provides your clamping force. If it's out in the middle of the air... You can just use doing? a stud extractor. You slip it over the top, it locks on, and you can have a go at it again. But the, it's stuck. But most of the time, these things don't work because the fact that it sheared the original head off means that a stud extractor is probably going to shear it off lower down because it's seized in the thread. And once you shear it off, flush with the block, which it practically always does... What block? We're talking, then we're you have to start it, drilling it. And that's what we'll talk about next. All right, just to represent a wait. flush sheared off bolt, let's screw a nut on there. Screw it down enough to represent there. That's roughly what it will always look like. Like a nice little flush sheared off stud down inside the surface. You can't get anything on that to yeah. grip hold of it. So what do we do? Yeah. Right, okay, to drill down into the stump. What you're about to witness. Is many levels of stupidity. The most important thing is to drill right in the centre. It's absolutely critical that you get your drill bit, yep. if you can, right down the middle. Then well, no, no, it's not if you can. You've got to try your Then when you use in the either an easy out or a left-hand drill bit, whatever it is, to get in there and try and remove the debris, then it will be in the It's not debris. You're trying to wind it back out, you fucking retard. That's not the middle. Bit. If it's off to one side, you can actually go in and damage the engine block. That's got nothing to do with it. What happens is if you try and rotate something off center, you don't rotate the original it. parent thread and you want that intact if you possibly can, because then the job gets a lot more expensive. So to get your easy out in the middle, you need to drill the drill down the middle. To get that, you need a spot drill right in the middle. And to get that, you need a center punch first, right in the center. Right, so number one is most fasteners don't break flush. Flush with the block, just say, but they don't break perpendicular to the axis. Broken bolt. So, when you look at bro... Oh, fucking not this prick. We know what it's like. Um, when they break, they don't break nice and square, is the way to talk about it. They break with this little tongue hanging out, right? They break with this little bit. There's a few reasons why, and in this video, what got there, you see, there's loads of them broken. They're all broken, and they have they're broken at an angle, right? And the main reason why they break at an angle, and they always main reason why they always break at an angle, is because of the action of what you're doing. What you're doing is you're t t twisting, and with a bolt, you're actually trying to back it out. So you're pulling and twisting. So if I get this is going to be a very, very simple explanation. Give me that lead. Oh, for God's sake. I'm just, I just want a bit of wire, and for some reason it's tangled with a thermocouple because that's what you do when you put things down. One on top of the other, and no disturbance whatsoever. They somehow get tangled. For fuck's sake. Right, so. This, oh, this isn't going to work, is it? What about that bit of wire instead? Right, so, big stiff bit of wire. So what you're doing is, imagine... Imagine this is a force, right? So if you rotated something, this is what you'd be doing. You'd be having a force that rotates. But not only that is the bolt is backing out. So if you get this force, and then you have an in and out force, so going in and out, that's the, the, the direction of the force. If you've got a rotation with an in and out, this happens. Yeah? Because you're, you're trying to rotate, but back out. And if you look, that looks like a thread. So that's the force... Right, that's being applied to your fastener. So when it breaks, when it, when the the grain boundaries start to unzip and break, they will follow that direction, not of the thread. The thread is the you know the the root of the thread is the the, the skinnier section, but they will follow that as you are um, twisting. Right, it's torsional stress, which I will do an entire. An entire thing about, right? 
So when you look at torsional stress, we've got a good example. You can see there, right, that it isn't a straight line. It's this curve. You see there's a curve to it because of the two components, right? You're translating. Look, there's even a, look, there's even a crankshaft here. Look, we're talking about torsional stress. All right? When you do torsional stress, there's a component to that. And... Like I say, look, it's even showing you. It's almost like a spring look between shear and blah, 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 blah. The fact of the matter is, is that because you've got this curve to it, right, it is going to break following that pattern. Um, I'm just trying to, there's usually a very good simple diagram that I can't seem to see. Um, but yeah. Right, that, without going all balls deep into it, that's the basics of it. So what you need to do is, if you've got this bolt where it's it's not it's not parallel to the surface, it's sticking out like this. It's got this little shitty ear sticking out. You need to file that flat. That's what you want to do. And you want to try and make sure that where you file it, you file it so that the centre punch is on that flat that you filed. So it's fresh material. If you can, I've got my laptop here. If you can't, and you've got this fasten like this, get one of these and just come in and nose it, or a Dremel or whatever. Try and make a little... Try and get it in the middle, obviously. Try and just make a little dimple, near, you know, as close to the centre as you can. So your drill or your centre punch or whatever tries to go to the bottom, it, you know, it finds the, the, the bottom of the, of the hemisphere. There's a trick to do that. I'll show you. This trick, here we go, are you ready? Peak stupidity in three, God, it's getting hot in here. <laughs> three, two, one. Right, go. to get a pin mark right in the center of that stump, take a nice sharp spring-loaded center punch and you've now got to find right. exactly where, where the center Transfer is. There's no use marking it because this might be upright on the front of an engine that you can barely see. So a simple way to do it right. is use another nut because at the moment right. it's flush, which is how they always break off. But if it's down inside no. a hole, like it is now, right. then I can put this centre punch down inside the hole and the walls of this nut will hold the centre punch. You can see that you tipped it, it doesn't in the fit center. that nut. So it doesn't sit in the centre. It would only sit in the centre if the hole, the minor diameter of the nut fits that. The call transfer punches. Here we go. Again, anyone who hasn't seen transfer punches... Uh, transfer punches. You've got to be very careful when you type this in because if you put trans and punch, they arrest you because it's violence against trans people. So these are transfer punches. These are really cheap, shitty ones. Um, but as you can see, they've got basically got a centre punch, but the diameters of the shafts are all a size one, two, three, four, you know, in millimetres. Imperial, whatever, that's a transfer punch. All right. This doesn't fit this. This is like a hot dog in a bloody bucket. So pop that on there. In fact, better still. Just glue it on there, and that will sit right in the middle. But your you it won't just no, it won't just sit in the middle, you dickhead. This is the problem, right? So I have a hole. <laughs> I have a hole. I have more than one. So just say we have this hole, right? I'm just using this because it's here. Just say we have this hole here, right? How and, and it's got it's got a fastener in it, right? So you can't you can't see this nice crisp hole. It's got a broken fastener in it, and it's chamfered and stuff, right? It's all mucky and crappy. How am I going to put a nut on there and it's going to just line up? It's not. What happens if it's like this? What happens if it's this? What happens? You can't use these radius on there because that's not the centre of the hole. Look, you can see it. it. Doesn't work like that shit for brains. It just doesn't work like that. Number two is. You're you fucking super glue. You're using the flanks on the nut, which isn't there. This wouldn't exist like this. You dickhead. And then you're holding it. It gets even better. This is his demo. He decided to do this. Right. And once that's set, you can glue that to the side of an engine block anywhere you like, as long. Anywhere as you like. It's no. totally central with the stud. Well, how are you going to know that? You just said there's no point drawing on the stud because you won't be able to see because it's on an engine block underneath a car. How the fuck are you going to see that? Do you realise that engines are covered in shit? The glue isn't going to glue to anything. It's all grease and crap. 
You're talking fucking nonsense. And then you can... And here's the creme brulee of it all. It holds it dead in the middle. It doesn't though, does it, you fuckwit? It... Look, his nuts not even fucking lined up. His glue hasn't set. And his nuts not even lined up, you dick shit. We can see it. Is, did he just say perfect? He said perfect. Crank that bitch up. Have we got maximum volume? Crank that bitch up. Did he say perfect? It does. It says perfect. It's not perfect. Look at it, you fucking dickhead. Show us. Right, now you've Show got us. The center punch mark right in the middle of the stud. Leave the nut in place. It guided the center punch. Use it again to guide the spot drill right down the middle to make a perfect pilot hole to guide the main drill. But you don't. You don't use pilot bolt drills. Number two is why am I not fit in the nut? Why are you holding it? It should be glued on. Did the glue not work on these brand new nuts? Why well, there we are. So what Christ. Oh <laughs> no! So we're not going to see it. We're not even going to see the nut. That we're not even going to see the hole that's not in the middle. <laughs> Dude, if you're going to demonstrate something, demonstrate. But you've got your pilot hole drilled, then you can. Yeah, fucking hell! Look, right? There's these. I've got these. There's these nuts on here, right? And. If you wind that back like so, right, so it's not, you know, it's, it's sub flush, then yes, if I had a transfer punch that fit in there, but even then there's a bit of wobble, but if I had a transfer punch that fit the inner diameter of the, the, my, the, ma, the major diameter of the internal threads, which would be the minor diameter, that's a bit weird, way of thinking about it, you put that in there, you get pretty much in the centre, but you won't have this. It will be like this. It will be flush, right? Well, it won't be, it'll be like a little shit bit but it this is the block right this is this is like i said part of the engine case you know whatever there's nothing to align to that's the fucking problem get into Muck that if it's a 10 mil bolt as in the case of this one then you get in there with a five mil then a six maybe a seven and as you start maybe a 12 maybe a to drill it out. if you can use a left hand drill bit then that can often bring out the debris with it that works very well if you haven't got left hand drill you've never used that and you've never heard of a left hand drill bit until i did a video about it showing people how to back shit out stop fucking bits you can use it's now plagiarizing my fucking outs. videos that's a left-handed <laughs> twist thread so you get it in there a twist thread unlike there with a ratchet and that can bring threads. it out so there's all sorts of things all of this business of rescuing damaged fasteners which it all requires a sense of humour and lots of patience and a dogged mentality to get it done because obviously these no, it requires tools the right will method. cost a bit. Things like spot drills, easy outs, stud extractors, lock on sockets, decent quality spring punches, they're all the tools you'll need. So I'll leave some links in the description so you can read a little bit. I bet I bet you will. Decent so quality what? spring Sergeant. punches, they're all the tools you'll need. So I'll leave some links in the description so you can read a little bit more about them and decide what you might want to invest in yourself to get on with your projects, to not keep having to stop to take things to other people to do and have a little bit more fun with the final result. Do you remember when Dell used to go on about how he's doing this for, for the young kids so you don't have to go to a dealer, so you don't have to spend all this money? And he's got spring punches that cost like fucking 25 quid each, each. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. <sighs> yeah, just a fucking dickhead, aren't you? Make sure we get that Sealy Skills in there. Sealy Skills. <laughs> Hope that makes sense. I'll see you in a bit.